the Americans who were coming in and the Navajos because in some ways they were very much like each other. They were ambitious, they were hardworking, they loved to tell a good story, and they believed in the possibilities of tomorrow. Um, it's, an, it's, it's in many ways an American story. The times were defined by manifest destiny. This philosophy advocated settling the West. James Polk was elected the 11th president of the United States in November 1844. President Polk wanted to expand America's boundaries to the Pacific. The United States and the populace of the United States had gotten itself whipped up into a kind of idealistic frenzy, uh, believing uh, that this was the right thing to do. And we were doing all these different uh, people we were going to conquer uh, a huge favor. Much of the West was claimed by Mexico. Navajos also believed their homeland belonged to them. And almost all Native peoples um, that you can speak of had their trail of tears in terms of being removed in the face of white expansion. General Stephen Watts Kearney and the Army of the West was dispatched to take Mexican territories in 1846. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the Mexican-American War in 1848. The United States now controlled vast tracts of new land, some 1.2 million square miles. The Navajo homeland was considered United States territory. General Kearney wrote, the United States would protect the persons and property of all quiet and peaceful inhabitants within its boundaries against their enemies the Utahs, Navajos, and others. We were not citizens of the United States at that time. We were considered as enemy. So to do whatever uh, they want to with us. The Diné saw their homeland as sacred. The Anglos and the Hispanos actually saw themselves as the victims of uh, this massive wave of Navajo raiding in the 1850s. Um, and believe that they were the ones that had to be protected. The United States Army was not going to wage war on its own people, including the Hispanos, who were made citizens at the end of the uh, Mexican-American War. They went up and the young people right up and raiding and also and the Mexican do the same thing too, so that's what is where it started. Fort Defiance was constructed in the southern part of the Navajo homeland in 1851. Tension escalated. The United States was in the midst of civil war in the early 1860s. General James Henry Carlton was named military commander of New Mexico in the summer of 1862. James Henry Carlton was a, um, a brilliant man. He was a civilian appointment to the United States Army in uh, 1839. He had, uh, prior to that, pursued a literary career in Boston. General Carlton believed the military campaign against the Navajo was necessary. Carlton wanted the famous mountain man and frontiersman Christopher Kit Carson to lead the effort. Kit Carson was now a colonel with the New Mexico Volunteers. Kit Carson was 53 years old in 1862. Carson was living with his third wife, Josefa, and their family in Taos. Kit Carson followed his trend of obeying powerful, charismatic men. General Carlton and his soldiers twice explored an area along the Pecos River in the early 1850s. It was near the Texas border in southeast New Mexico. Carlton envisioned this place as a reservation for Navajos. It was called Bosque Redondo. Stark plains surround a tree-lined river. If the Indians in the American West were not put on reservations, they would be exterminated, federal policymakers believed. The reservation was considered the, a way of protecting the um, American Indians from extinction. General Carlton created Fort Sumner on the Pecos River in 1862. It was named for General Edwin Sumner, the former commander of the Department of New Mexico. General Carlton wanted Navajos moved to Bosque Redondo. He believed Navajos could live like pueblos as pastoral farmers. Another motivation that Carlton had for rounding up the Navajo and, and moving them was his belief, based on no particular evidence, 
that Navajo country was rich in gold. General Carlton also wanted Mescalero Apaches brought to the Bosque Redondo Reservation. Carlton ordered a shoot-to-kill policy in 1862. Carlton ordered Kit Carson to kill all Mescalero men wherever and whenever you can find them. The women and children will not be harmed, but you will take them prisoners. Kit Carson and his soldiers captured much of the Mescalero Apache tribe. About 400 men, women, and children were brought to Bosque Redondo. Our people were not uh, used to that. They were warriors, they were hunters, they were, they were uh, uh, fighters, they were braves. And they had to come and grovel in the, uh, in the dirt, which was something different for them, something new, because they were not farmers like the Pueblos. Kit Carson wrote a letter of resignation to General Carlton on February 3rd, 1863. Carlton refused his request. General Carlton ordered Navajos to surrender.